agree or disagree with the judgment, it kind of comes off as motivated reasoning. Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and to follow up on something Robert Barnes and I discussed during one of our recent live streams, Ellen Wood was ordered to show cause why his pro hoc vice authorization to represent Carter Page in Carter Page's defamation lawsuit in Delaware should not be revoked. Okay, that was one heck of a mouthful, and I truly appreciate it, so we're going to get clear on some terms before we get into this vlog. Ellen Wood is an attorney who is probably best known for representing Nicholas Sandman in Sandman's defamation lawsuits against CNN, Washington Post, and other media outlets. Carter Carter Page was Donald Trump's former foreign policy advisor briefly in 2016 before Carter Page became the object of part of the Russia investigation. Carter Page was the victim of what can only be described as certain abuses within the FBI, culminating in the FBI attorney basically falsifying documents to justify obtaining FISA warrants against Carter Page. I have done detailed vlogs breaking down that entire story. If you haven't watched those, go back and watch them. They're great vlogs. L. Linwood is or was representing Carter Page in a defamation lawsuit stemming from the FISA abuses in the context of the whole Russia investigation, and in so doing, he had to obtain what is called Pro Hoc Vice authorization to act in Delaware. Pro Hoc Vice is special authorization granted by the court allowing an attorney who is not a member of that state bar to act on a specific case in that state. Pro Hoc Vice Latin, quote, for this occasion or, quote, for this event, literally, quote, for this turn, is a legal term usually referring to a practice in common law jurisdictions, whereby a lawyer who has not been admitted to practice in a certain jurisdiction is allowed to participate in a particular case in that jurisdiction. Although pro hack Vice admission is available in every American jurisdiction, civil law jurisdictions generally have much stricter rules for multi-jurisdictional practice. The term is used by the Catholic Church as well. And the last introductory term before we get into this vlog, motivated reasoning. If you are not hitherfore too familiar with the concept, it is a beautiful concept and it's defined as follows. Motivated reasoning is a phenomenon studied in cognitive of science and social psychology that uses emotionally biased reasoning to produce justifications or make decisions that are most desired rather than those that accurately reflect the evidence while still reducing cognitive dissonance. In other words, motivated reasoning is the, quote, tendency to find arguments in favor of conclusions we want to believe to be stronger than arguments for conclusions we do not want to believe, end quote. Motivated reasoning is similar to confirmation bias, where evidence that confirms a belief, which might be a logical belief rather than an emotional one, is either sought after more or given more credibility than evidence that disconfirms a belief. It stands in contrast to critical thinking where beliefs are approached in a skeptical and unbiased fashion. Now, motivated reasoning is not necessarily wrong, and I'm not saying that the judgment in this particular case is either right or wrong. It is the judgment of the judge, and there's nothing any of us can do about that. I am just saying that it reeks of motivated reasoning. For those of you who may not know, a couple of weeks ago, the presiding judge in the Carter Page defamation case in Delaware issued an order to show cause why the pro hoc vice authorization for Linwood should not be revoked by the court. In the order to show cause, the judge raised certain conduct by L. Linwood in other cases in other states and questioned whether or not the pro hack Vice authorization should be revoked in Delaware. Although it seems that the pro hack Vice authorization is a privilege and not a right, it does nonetheless afford certain rights of due process to the attorney, and the judge gave Linwood the opportunity to defend himself, and Linwood did so. Linwood, in fact, did file an opposition to the order to show cause, and the judge nonetheless came to the conclusion that it would be inadvisable to allow Linwood to continue practicing in Delaware for the Carter Page lawsuit. The judge then therefore revoked the pro hack Vice authorization, Linwood can no longer represent Carter Page in Delaware, and Carter Page must find a new attorney. That is the overview of the situation. Now let's get into the judgment. We're going to read through it, and you can come to your own conclusions as to whether or not you agree or disagree with the decision, and whether or not you find the decision reeks of motivated reasoning. In the Superior Court for the State of Delaware, Carter Page, an individual plaintiff versus Oath, Inc., a corporation defendant. Memorandum Opinion and Order, Opinion Following the Issuance of a Rule to Show Cause. Several weeks ago, and pursuant to Superior Court Civil Rule 91, I issued a rule to show cause why the approval I had given to L. Lynn Wood, Esquire, to practice before this court in this case should not be revoked. Mr. Wood is not licensed to practice law in Delaware. Practicing pro hoc vice is a privilege and not a right. I respect the desire of litigants to select counsel of their choice. When out-of-state counsel is selected, however, I am required to ensure the appropriate level of integrity and competence. During the course of this litigation, a number of high-profile cases have been filed around the country challenging the presidential election. The cases included inter alia suits in Georgia, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Opinions were delivered in all of the states which were critical in various ways of the lawyering by the proponents of the lawsuits. In the rule to show cause, I raised concerns I had after reviewing written decisions from Georgia and Wisconsin. Specifically in Georgia, a lawsuit filed by Mr. Wood resulted in a determination that the suit was without basis in law or fact. The initial pleadings in the Wisconsin case were riddled with errors. I had concerns as listed in the rule to show cause. 
As you can see from the introductory paragraphs of this judgment, none of the conduct at issue occurred in this court before this judge. It all occurred in other courts in other jurisdictions. So what you can understand is that you have this judge in this file reading the judgments in other jurisdictions in other files in which Linwood is either a lawyer or a party and raising that conduct to determine whether or not the ProHack Vice authorization should be revoked in Delaware. Some might say that is a judge doing his or her job. Others might say that is a hammer looking for a nail. But moving on, we get into our first hint of where the judge is going if it wasn't already apparent. I gave Mr. Wood until January 6, 2021 to file a response. He did so at 10.09 p.m. January 6. In the practice of law, this is what we call a judicial pot shot. You have the judge saying, look, I gave you until January 6 to file a response. You did so at 10.09 in the evening on January 6th, and I'm saying it because I didn't like it. You know, I know what you're doing right now, mm. and I don't like it. The judge is highlighting that Linwood literally waited until basically the last hour to file a response to the order to show cause, and judges tend to not like that. The judge then goes over the grounds of defense raised by Linwood in his response, which are as follows. The response focused primarily upon the fact that none of the conduct I questioned occurred in my court. The claim is factually correct. In his response, Mr. Wood writes, Absent conduct that prejudicially disrupts the proceedings, trial judges have no independent jurisdiction to enforce the rules of professional conduct. Mr. Wood also tells me it is the province of the Delaware Supreme Court to supervise the practice of law in Delaware and enforce our rules of professional conduct. With this proposition, I have no disagreement. In my view, it misses the point and ignores the clear language of Rule 90.1. The response also contains the declaration of Charles Slalina Esquire. I know Mr. Slalina and have the highest respect for him, especially for his work and expertise in the area of legal ethics. His declaration here focused on my lack of a role in lawyer discipline and was not helpful regarding the issue of the appropriateness and advisability of continuing Pro Hoc Vice permission. Here you can see that L. Linwood is actually raising two grounds of defense. The first of which is that none of the impugned conduct occurred in this particular court. It all occurred in other jurisdictions. The second of which is that the Delaware judge has no business looking into disciplinary issues in other jurisdictions. The first point is a good one that the judge is going to get to. The second point the judge says is irrelevant because the judge is saying I'm not looking into disciplinary issues. I'm just looking into whether or not it is advisable to to continue with your ProHack VJ authorization. And the judge says no. Rule 90.1 E reads in full, withdrawal of attorneys admitted pro hack vice shall be governed by the provisions of Rule 90 B. The court may revoke a pro hack vice admission sua sponte or upon the motion of a party if it determines after a hearing or other meaningful opportunity to respond the continued admission pro hack vice to be inappropriate or inadvisable. As we learned from the Michael Flynn judicial saga, sua sponte means the court raises it of its own volition, of its own motion, and it was not a motion brought by any of the parties. So on a plain reading of this rule, the judge can sua sponte on his or her own volition by her own decision raise the issue as to whether or not the pro hack vice authorization should be revoked. And if anyone did not think that L. Linwood gave enough justification to any judge looking to come to this conclusion to come to this conclusion, what can I say? I have no intention to litigate here or make any findings as to whether or not Mr. Wood violated other states' rules of professional conduct. I agree that is outside my authority. It is the province of the Delaware Office of Disciplinary Counsel and ultimately the Delaware Supreme Court or their counterparts in other jurisdictions to make a factual determination as to whether Mr. Wood violated the rules of professional conduct. The judge then goes on to distinguish and therefore disregard all of the case law that L. Linwood filed because the judge says, look, you're right, this is not a disciplinary issue. This is only an issue as to whether or not I have the authority to to revoke the pro hack vice authorization I granted you. What I am always required to do is ensure that those practicing before me are of sufficient character and conduct themselves with sufficient civility and truthfulness. Violations of rules of professional conduct are for other entities to judge based upon an appropriate record following guidelines of due process. My role here is much more limited. In response to my inquiry regarding the Georgia litigation, Mr. Wood tells me he was only a party and the case is on appeal. He also tells me that the affidavit filed in support of the case only contained errors. Neither defense holds merit with me. As an attorney, Mr. Wood has an obligation, whether on his own or for his clients, to file only cases which have a good faith basis in fact or law. The court's finding in Georgia otherwise indicates that the Georgia case was textbook frivolous litigation. I am also troubled that an error-ridden affidavit of an expert witness would be filed in support of Mr. Wood's case. An attorney as experienced as Mr. Wood knows expert affidavits must be reviewed in detail to ensure accuracy before filing. Failure to do so is either mendacious or incompetent. 
This is a very interesting question in law because what you have here is a judge basically conducting a trial on things that occurred in other jurisdictions in order to determine whether or not pro hack VJ authorization should be revoked. It seems the judge does in fact have total discretion that this is a privilege and not a right and that following due process, the judge can issue whatever order they think is appropriate or advisable. But something does strike me as being potentially dangerous of going into other court files in other jurisdictions to hold those actions against a lawyer in another file in another jurisdiction. Whether the decision is right or justifiable in this particular case, it does seem to open the door to potentially weaponizing the process itself. The problem here is that if we are in fact dealing with a judge who is motivated by motivated reasoning, Ellen Wood certainly did give the judge enough reasons to justify his motivated reasoning. And while this decision may be more clear-cut to some, it certainly does open a door, it would seem to judges going around fishing in other court files to find things to use against a lawyer in their court file to revoke their ProHack VJ authorization. And if you thought that the judicial pot shots against Lynn Wood were done, they're not. Prior to the pandemic, I watched daily counsel practice before me in a civil, ethical way to tirelessly advance the interests of their clients. It would dishonor them were I to allow this pro hack VJ order to stand. The conduct of Mr. Wood, albeit not in my jurisdiction, exhibited a toxic stew of mendacity, prevarication, and surprising incompetence. What has been shown in court decisions of our sister states satisfies me that it would be inappropriate and inadvisable to continue Mr. Wood's permission to practice before this court. I acknowledge that I preside over a small part of the legal world in a small state. However, we take pride in our bar. I don't think I'm going out on a limb when I say that I get the feeling that this judgment was drafted for publication. And if you thought the judicial pot shots at Wood were done, they're not. One final matter. A number of events have occurred since the filing of the rule to show cause. I have seen reports of, quote, tweets attributable to Mr. Wood. At least one called for the arrest and execution of our vice president. Another alleged claims against the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, which are too disgusting and outrageous to repeat. Following on top of these are the events of January 6, 2021 in our nation's capital. No doubt these tweets and many other things incited these riots. I am not here to litigate if Mr. Wood was ultimately the source of the incitement. I make no finding with regard to this conduct and it does not form any part of the basis for my ruling. I reaffirm my limited role. The judge affirms that these allegations form no basis of his ruling, yet he he dedicates two paragraphs of his judgment to these allegations. Again, in my humble opinion, a judgment that was clearly drafted for public consumption. Then we get to the final paragraph formally revoking L. Lynn Wood's pro hack VJ authorization. I am revoking my order granting Lynn Wood Esquire the privilege of representing the plaintiff in this case. Given my ruling, here the hearing scheduled for January 13, 2021 is cancelled. My staff will contact the parties to schedule as soon as possible a date for argument on the defendant's motion to dismiss. It is so ordered. Now there are two diverging interests here. One is the right of a party to have counsel of their choice, and the other is the inherent authority of the court to revoke pro hack VJ authorization that it may have granted to somebody. And some are going to look at this judgment and say that it is a violation of a party's right to have counsel of their choice, whereas others are going to say it is preserving the decorum of the courtroom. That will be up to you to decide and let me know what you think in the comment section below, but the reality, the legal reality of this particular situation is that this is probably the best thing that could happen to Carter Page. For right or for wrong, it was quite clear that L. Lynn Wood was a liability to representing Carter and not an asset, that the judge had it out for Linwood from the beginning, and if Ellen would continue to represent Carter Page, it would only hurt Carter Page. Although I know that a lot of you out there are saying if the judge had it in for the lawyer, the judge is going to have it in for Carter Page, regardless of who the counsel is. And you may be right, and it may be a question for the new counsel to decide how to get this court file in the hands of another judge. Apparently, L. Linwood is consulting with an attorney to determine what his appeal rights are of this revocation. I don't think it matters. I don't think he has any chance of succeeding on appeal, even if he has an argument. There is just too much in there to justify the decision of the judge and no higher court is going to overturn that decision in my humble opinion. To be continued, if there are any developments, I will do a vlog on it. And with that said, if you like my videos, you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm. Feed me if you want to support the channel, all of these support links are in the pinned comment. We've got PayPal, Patreon, subscribe to our YouTube membership. We've got merch. Robert Barnes and I have a page on Locals. It is called vivabarneslaw.locals.com. I am also on Rumble where you can see all of my videos that you find here on YouTube. But more important than any of that, take care of yourselves. Check in on friends and family. Make sure everyone around you is doing well. And now you know your vlog. Peace out. Yeah.